Hello, my multi majestic mummified mammoths. So, Mark mentioned Mark Mates. So, make yourself comfortable, pour yourself a dram, and get ready to go on a little single malt journey with me in Ralphie Review 919. I am reviewing a Scotch single malt whiskey. No surprise there. Uh, but before we go any further, a big thank you to Pavel Kalinowski for that malt mention. Thank you, Pavel. Right. Scotch single malt whiskey. I'm doing a series at the moment on official bottlings that are out there, readily available, easy to find, perhaps less well known, so not necessarily a big mainstream brand. And um, I'm balancing off my reviews just a little bit with this one because some of you have commented, and I have certainly noticed, that um, some of my reviews have been getting a bit more negative about what I'm reviewing these days. And there's a very simple reason for that, Mott Mates, and it's because some whiskies, in my opinion, are deteriorating in quality, and I am not the person to be sitting here like a nodding dog telling you how wonderful and fabulous everything is when it just isn't. What you've got to watch is that you don't fall into the trap of blind sentimentality, just accepting everything and anything from the whiskey industry as being fabulous, brilliant, exceptional and premium. It can be and many brands are, but not all. And there's increasingly a significant issue that we, that we need to address. And that is the problem we're facing with batch variations. I have to say that it's not a problem I have with this particular brand of single malt and I'm going to give you an important reason why shortly but when we go into Ralphie Review 919 Extras I'm really going to examine, I'm going to take a bit of a dive into the reasons for batch inconsistency in single malt whiskies and um, how we should respond to it. In the meantime I shall show this bottle. I've reviewed it once before. Craig Elke, 17 years old, bottled at 46%. And in the back of the label, it says it's unchill filtered. And in the front of the label, it's got a nice little batch code. The batch, for your information, is 04 618. Excuse me. That's an, either an eight or a three. I want to get this right. Number 04-6137. I have already poured the glass because, as you know, it's a minute in the glass for each year in the cask. And as such, I like to let these older whiskies breathe a little bit. You will find this along with its stablemate, the 13 year old, on shelves in shops and I can tell you right now, it's consistently good single malt. I'm glad I bought this bottle. I'm very happily and surprised. In fact, I, I am tempted now to buy a few more Craig Alleghys. It's one of these distillery names where you used to see it pop up in the likes of Cadenheads and other independent bottlers, but mainly Cadenheads. And you'd ignore it because it was one of these obscure distilleries that was completely off your radar, a little bit like Glentochers is. And yet, it's still damn good, solid signature single malt whiskey. It really is. And my last review of the 17-year-old was Ralphie Review 650, back in 2017, so about five years ago. 
And has it changed much? No, it hasn't. In fact, it's slightly improved. If there's any changes at all, slight changes for the better. Possibly two reasons for that, because it genuinely is better cask, better maturation, better result from manufacture, but also because I'm coming back to this second time round, third time round, having tasted it before, so my memory banks, my long-term taste and smell memory, but particularly taste memory, is strong with Craig Allochy. Um And we should never, never question our own instincts when we're tasting something, particularly when we've paid for the bottle. We should trust ourselves. Even if you regard yourselves as relatively inexperienced, don't worry about it. If you're unsure, get a second opinion from someone who is experienced. Right, how about this single malt? On the nose, neat. Malty, cereal and biscuity. What kind of biscuits? These kind of biscuits, you'll find them in the UK. They're called digestive biscuits. <laughs> There's quite a number of whiskies taste slightly of digestive biscuits now and again. This is basically a wheat biscuit, um, slightly granular, slightly gritty, with a little bit of fine husk in it, um, which gives it a certain texture. And um, the, the British, of course, are very fond of the biscuits. There's two biscuits that you really need to taste if you're in the UK or live in the UK for whiskey references. One is the digestive biscuit, as illustrated here, and the second is the rich tea biscuit, which is lighter, uh, wonderful texture, wonderful crumbliness, but it's a lighter biscuit. It, it is initially it comes across as quite plain, but it's got that toasted cereal note, which you will find in some single malt whiskies. You're certainly getting that digestive biscuit note um, in in this Kriegelachy, and it's quite rich, and it really comes across as a well-made whisky, a very well-made whisky. Presented, chill filtered slightly hazy in the bottle. There's no mention about natural colour, but when you hold it up, just have a look at the, I'm having a look at it, saying if there's any colour in there, it's very, very little. And although I'd rather have no caramel at all, I do acknowledge and I do appreciate that a tiny little bit of caramel won't affect a single malt that much, although you're better without it but it's when you absolutely load up a bottle with the equivalent of a teaspoon's worth of E150 caramel colourant. I'm, I'm, I'm not, seriously, to, to get a really dark whisky from a light whisky, you've got to use practically a whole teaspoon. The amount of water that I add to a glass, you'd have to add that in caramel colourant to, to one single bottle to get that colour variation. And is simply to misdirect and mislead. But there's nothing misleading about the prices. We've got to be mindful. Prices are going up right across the board. We're looking for value for money. Is this good value for money? In my opinion, yes it is. Also gives you some useful information in the back of the label. Our own malt. Our malt is not supplied to any other distillery. It has a uniquely heavy character which we preserve by grinding it finer than anyone else does. Okay, right, so I'll, go, I'll go along with that. Using a very efficient Steinnicker mash tun. Um, it is shallower and drains better uh, than the deeper tons. The, and so the, basically the highlighting a production technique in the style of mash tun they're using so that they can process a finer milled grain and in which they're claiming they're getting a richer result. Um, I'm not sure I would totally go along with that. It really depends on the quality of the grain used in the first place for the quality of the results. But certainly 
Um, it is a tangible point of uniqueness. They mention it on the label and fair play to them. Nose. It's biscuity, malty, slightly vanilla. A little touch of fresh fruit citrus and a little green, fruit green note like green apple. Slight aromatic once it sort of warms up slightly in the glass and starts to um, open up a little bit. A little bit of vegetal note as well, floral vegetal, slight winter green note, very very distant green mints, slight spearmint, and some dried fruit. Um, Decent, substantial, characterful, and engaging. Taste. Good, rich, slightly gingery, slightly syrupy, cereal, rich arrival. Very nice. Falls away in the development. Cereal, dried fruit, that digestive biscuit note, hint of mint in the background. And the finish is relatively light for a 17 year old, but then we add some water. How much? Less than you might think. Two millilitres. At this point, you're going to give it a few minutes for the reason being that you will be richly rewarded with an amplified taste experience from adding that little drop of water. It just transforms this whiskey into something genuinely exciting and substantial. It's got 17 years old on the label and when you nose it and taste it, you're seeing, because of the disclosure, practical disclosure, you can then use that as a point of reference as to what you're getting coming from the glass. It ex the age statement explains the glass of whiskey in front of you. This is why age statements are so important to me. It's simply down to disclosure. The nose, fruitier, a little bit softer, slightly more cereal buttery note. Barley sugar, most definitely. A little bit of toffee creeping in there. The toffee is slightly floral, slightly herbaceous. A complex nose. Slower arrival. Excuse me. A slower arrival that steadily opens up into the development. The development is a busy space with toffee, barley sugars, and a lovely toasted cereal note. This bottle boasts that the they make their malts malty, and it's a justified boast. It's, it's as good as I remember it last time. In fact, if anything, it's slightly better. And the reason for this is that Kregelichi is not a mainstream, high-branded single malt. It's not Bowmore. It's not Ochentoshin. It's not Talisker. It's not Lagavulin. It's not Glenmorangie. It's not Glenlivet. It's not Highland Park. It's not Laphroaig. It's one of these quieter malts which the unadventurous customer tends to bypass because they're looking for a name they recognise, and yet it's in the names that you recognise due to the high volume of sales that it makes it more difficult for the distilleries to retain consistency 
and therefore when you go for the mainstream brands the chances are you could be disappointed meanwhile you're bypassing quieter brands that are simply less well known and this is one of the purposes of me being here in the Bothy in the middle of the Irish Sea is to introduce these quieter whiskies like Craig Elichy, like Glen Tochers, for example, you really find them amongst the independent bottlers. That's where they tend to shine. These obscure names of distilleries that, I mean, there's distilleries that used to be obscure, like Deanston, Tobermory. Look at them now. They, they're being applauded because they're just finally getting the space that they can be recognised in. And they've been around, Deanston has been around for a long time, as has Tobermory. But they've been invisible. They've been relegated down the division. And I think that the way things are going, if we're looking for quality in our whisky, we want to examine these so-called lower divisions of whiskies that are less talked about and less apl applauded. Uh, because the, this is where the this is where the the treasure hunt. This is the this is where you find the treasure. Another taste before the malt, Mark. Even richer now. Beautiful cereal, sweet and sour. Spicy toffee. Develops gingery and a little bit minty. Now there's a more of a finish going on. It's a gentle finish, but it's more of a prolonged finish because of adding the water just stretches the arrival, development and finish. The whole event, it stretches the timeline by about four or five seconds. And in the finish, you're getting a little bit of green tea, a little bit of jasmine, toffee and um, cereal notes that continuity and a nice clean finish which shows that which tells me that there's very little if, if there is any caramel I didn't to be honest I doubt it um, it's not having any impact any negative impact whatsoever malt mark I'm delighted to say that this is one of the malt marks that is actually improving so the idea that all whiskies are getting worse it's it's not actually true here's a, an example of a, a whiskey widely available official bottling and it's actually like the 13 year old is getting better and better well done Craig Elichy I tell you what it's good to put you a wee bit further up on the radar so people can appreciate what a damn good single malt whiskey you are. So Malt Mark Malt Mates, 89 out of 100. Hope you've enjoyed this. Pop back again for Ralphie Review, 919 extras in which I will be talking about batch inconsistency and the reasons for it. So I'll see you then. Bye-bye.